Today's video is an update to an older video regarding Home Assistant Core with Duck DNS on a Raspberry Pi. I received a few comments stating the older video no longer works. The biggest difference is the new install requires Rust and Cargo to install successfully. In this video, we walk through installing the Raspberry Pi OS. Then we update everything and install Home Assistant. And finally, we install Duck DNS and have a few examples of forwarding the ports and a couple of different routers. It's a little time consuming, but pretty straightforward. So let's get to it. First, we need to download Raspberry Pi OS to the SD card. So let's head over to Google here and do a search for Pi OS. Gonna be the first link here. And we're gonna scroll down and download the Pi Imager. Get it for your operating system. And then we'll go ahead and install it. Once installed, go ahead and run it. And then from here, we're gonna choose our operating system. I tested this earlier on my Raspberry Pi 2, but it was extremely slow, but I did use the light version, 32-bit light of the Pi OS. Here, though, we're gonna be using the full version so that I can display it on a virtual machine. So go ahead and choose whichever version you're going to be using, and then choose your storage. And then before you click on right, click on this little gear settings advanced button. And then here you can set the host name, so we're just going to make this, make this test pi, and then more importantly, we can go ahead and enable SSH, and we can set our default username and password. Go ahead and save this, and then write, and be sure to back up anything you have on your SD card before you click yes on this, because it will format the card. That being said, go ahead and click yes, and let it do its thing. After the install, move the SD card over to your Pi and connect the network and power. Now that we have the Pi connected, let's go ahead and open up a terminal window on our desktop here. And we're going to ping the host name of the Pi. And it is responding, so it's on the network now. Let's go ahead and SSH into it using the credentials we created during setup. And the first thing we need to do is update it. After updating, we need to install some additional packages that, re that are required by Home Assistant. Next, we're adding a user called Home Assistant and it's gonna have its own home directory. We're adding the dial-out, GPIO, and the I2C groups to it. These are used for controlling different ZigBee and Z-Wave controllers. You can check out Home Assistant's webpage for more information on that. Now we're going to create a directory for the install. We're going to make the Home Assistant user we just created the owner of that directory. And now we're going to switch to that Home Assistant user. And this is where things are a little different than what's posted on Home Assistant's webpage for the Core Edition install. Apparently some of the extensions in the newer build of Home Assistant were built with Rust. And then without Rust and its compiler cargo, you're going to run into issues during the install. This script here is an easy way to install Rust and its compiler. So let's go ahead and just run that. I'm going to select option 1 here. It does say here that we'll have to restart the shell so that it can reload the path environments to include the cargo uh, bin directory. You can see here if we try and run cargo, it's not found, rust C, not found, so let's go ahead and exit. Exit again, and then reconnect. Now I just need to switch back to the Home Assistant user. I'm gonna go back to the Home Assistant directory that we're installing to. And now we can create the Python environment and activate it. And now we just need to install some more required packages for Python inside of our virtual environment. And then finally we can install Home Assistant. And after the install, we can just type in JSS to run Home Assistant. 
this will take some time to run so it has to build its configuration and whatnot so just give it just a little bit of time and then let's go ahead and browse over to our pi test pi and it's going to be on port 8123 and there it is Now that Home Assistant is installed, let's head over to duckdns.org. And go ahead and get logged in at the top if you aren't already. And go ahead and create you a subdomain right here in the middle. I'm gonna go ahead and use the one that I already have here. After you've got your subdomain created, I'm gonna go up to the top to install click on Pi, then choose the subdomain that you just created, and then it gives you the instructions right here on installing this on your Pi. So we're going to SSH into the Pi. I'm going to make a directory, conduct DNS, change to it. I don't like using V, so we're just going to use nano duck.sh and then we'll just copy this line here and then control X Y for yes to save and then enter to keep the file name and now we just need to make the file executable go ahead and copy our cron job here and then open up cron tab H E again we're gonna use nano and then just go to the bottom here and paste in the line in control X Y for yes to save and just hit enter and now we can just test it by running running it it's not gonna do anything but we can cat the log now. We should get an OK. Yep. If you get a KO, it says here. But you need to check your token or domain to make sure everything there is good. Then afterwards, we need to just make sure that the cron job starts with the Pi. And that should do it. And now the only thing left is to for the ports on your home router. I have a few examples here pulled up. There's a D-Link router, and it looks like it's just found under Advanced. And then you would just enter the name here as the Home Assistant. The port's 8123, same thing on the inside. And then you would just enter the IP address of your Pi here. There are several ways you can get that. You can just ping it, or just go back into it, if config. And it's this up here, right here. So I'll just put that in there and then save these settings uh, over here on a TP link it's found under forwarding and then virtual servers and then again the service porch just one eight one two three same thing on the inside and then going to the Pi at the one two six address and I enable all port protocols and enable it and then save the net gear here is found under advanced setup and then port forwarding and triggering. It won't let me add the custom here, but same thing. You're gonna name it home assistant. Uh, it's starting port, it's gonna be 8123. Same thing with the end port. Same thing with the inside. And then the IP address would be the 126. And that should do it. You test it out and let me know how it goes in the comments below. Thanks guys for watching.